So before you start making your game, you probably know that you should have a core mechanic in your game. But what does that even mean? How can you determine the core mechanic of your game if you don't know entirely what that means? Well, I'm going to explain to you what a core mechanic actually means, as well as trying to explain how to properly design your entire game around your core mechanic. And what do I mean by that? When in video games there's always that one mechanic that defines the entire game. For example, in platformers it is jumping, in shooters it's shooting and in racing is the actual racing. Now you have to make sure that you have your core mechanic in your game perfected. And then you're able to expand your entire game to revolve around it. Now there is a diagram called the core diagram, where it shows you that the entire game is started from the core mechanic. That's why it's in the very center and it forms a nucleus for your game. The other mechanics form layers around the core, and the narrative is forming the very outer layer. So what is a mechanic? It is a system that facilitates interaction, and interaction is a conversation between the player and the game. In definition, the mechanics are the paint and the paintbrush of your game. But still that maybe doesn't explain to you what the core mechanic of your game should be. But the easiest way to understand it is to put it in a scenario. The core mechanic of the game will usually be an action or an interaction that occurs the most frequently. Another way of determining what the core mechanic is, without it you wouldn't be able to play the game at all. For example, in platformers, if you can't jump, the game becomes unplayable. The secondary mechanic are the interactions that happen less frequently. They could be layered from more frequent to least frequent. And progression systems form the mechanical envelope of the game, being a source of the change in the game. And the narrative layer puts all of the inner layers into context. Now that you maybe better understand the model, let's run through some examples. Now for the core in the center we have shoot, then the secondary mechanic is solving puzzles, moving to progressing through the levels, and the narrative is to escape from the psychotic robot. Maybe you can guess what game is referenced here, I'll give you a second. Pause the video if you need to. That should be fairly simple if you ever played Portal. We can now start to draw some observations using this example. The best games usually have a very strong core mechanic that is very easy to grasp but provides room to expand upon. It also helps if the mechanic has a powerful meaning to its own. The most effective games are the ones where each layer complements the other. You can test that by seeing what effect each layer has on the other. For example, in order to remove the enemies I must jump. Or in order to progress through the levels I must solve puzzles. But in order to solve puzzles I need to shoot. If your layers don't have this kind of complementing relationship, it would probably be best for you to rethink your design. Let's look at something different. What if you were creating a unique experience, something that hasn't been done before? Let's look at this diagram for a game called Flower. In Flower, the player controls the wind, blowing a flower petal through the air using movement of the game controller. Flying close to flowers results in player's petals being followed by other flower petals. If we design the core diagram, we can put the flying as the core mechanic. The second mechanic would be reviving the flowers, and you can't revive the flowers if you don't fly. Okay, third layer could be progressing through the area. You can't progress if you don't revive, and the last layer, the outer layer, would be revive the whole environment. That would represent your end goal, the player's mission. And again, you cannot revive the whole environment without progressing through all of the areas. Flower has a very unusual core mechanic, but it has done it extremely well. That's why it's such a great game. But there are mechanic combinations that are truly timeless. If you look at an example for an RPG game, and we don't have to name a single one, in the core mechanic we can put the fighting, and then the secondary layer would be completing missions, third would be progressing through the areas, gaining levels and unlocking skills, and the narrative would be, say, saving the world from something bad. This diagram represents almost every fantasy RPG there is. You cannot complete missions without fighting, but you cannot gain levels without completing missions, and if you cannot progress through the areas, gain levels or unlock skills, you will never be able to save the world from doom. This very simple concept you can put into a lot of games that you have played personally and enjoyed. Starting with the core mechanic and putting all of the effort in doing that would make the rest of the layers easier to implement. I would also like to add something to this here and say not all of the games fit this mold so well, and those games are some of the fun ones as well. Many successful games do model shifts, where they go from one core diagram to another, and that works really well. 
combining multiple core mechanics, but that is something often specific to bigger studios making games. For example, Mass Effect. If you ever played it, you can test yourself and try to map a core diagram for that game or any game in particular that you want. You can even try it on if you have your own game. But can you make a core diagram for a simple mobile game? It does have some similar mapping, but it's not at all the same. If we take a look at this core diagram, I'll again give you a couple of seconds to guess what game is in question here. It is Angry Birds. Now, the biggest shift in design are the core and the narrative layers. Removing pigs and completing levels have always been staples in progression design. Now, the core shifts are easier to understand, since on phones you are dealing with touchscreen, so the core mechanics would be slightly different. But the change in narrative is because of the different players, the game's target. Now, Angry Birds has a very awkward design, actually. Flinging removes pigs, but the relationship is indirect. In some way, it does not seem fun. Completing levels ultimately results in flinging. The only action in the game that you're doing is moving a finger slightly to aim at certain pigs. It doesn't seem very fun. Every game designer in the world probably has their own opinion on how Angry Birds got so big, but I think we have proof that it wasn't because of the design. This is what I was telling you about how layers would need to complement each other to make the game have sense. There will be certain tackles on how would some multiplayer games fit into this actually, but that is for a different video, because certain multiplayer games would require more than one player involved at each of the layers. That is why some of huge games like World of Warcraft are so popular. They take the classic RPG formula and add social dynamics on every step. And I hope I help you explain better what the core mechanic is and what it should be and how games evolve around that. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button. We are closing to that thousand super fast and I will see you in the next video.